These cassette tapes have sat silent for half a century, but slide them into a vintage Morantz and a lost world comes to life. I'm one of the victims of the Halifax explosion. You were there? Well, not really. I was just a little baby because I'm 63, going on 63 now. Right. But I was cut out 14 stitches. I still have the American with Ford over my head. Is that I'm right? I'm laying in bed, Mother tells me, and the plaster fell from the wall and hit me on the head and they found me on the commons. The radio call-in show from December 1978 would have been lost, except for a cub reporter who pressed record. Hi, my name is Rick Howe, and I'm a retired radio broadcast journalist. Howe would go on to have a legendary career in talk radio himself. He rediscovered the tapes a year and a half ago, and they led him to write this book, Eyewitness. The host of the hotline talk show, Dave Wright, decided to do a special on the explosion. And so he opened up the phone lines and invited uh, survivors, family members, others with stories to tell to call in and pass on their stories. And ended up with three hours of riveting, riveting uh, historical context. People who were actually there, you know, experiencing it as it happened and telling us what was going on. Wright called it a verbal picture history. Many callers didn't leave their names, just their memories. My experience on that day, I was married and had two small children. My oldest son, born January 1916, was 22 months old. And the youngest was born September 7, 1917. Both boys, my older son, and I watched the fire engine leading the station on Gardison Street. Billy Wells drove the fire, fire engine Patricia on that fateful day, and all he had left was the steering wheel in his hands. It was a miracle that he survived that day as the engine was blown to millions of pieces. I took my two small children, cut and bleeding from broken glass, and went next door to Mrs. Martin's, who had a place fixed up in her basement. After she'd been evacuated, her father tried to find her. When he came near to his home, he was not allowed near, as all the houses were on fire. All that he could find of the rooms were the, of the two houses in the barn were charred bones and her prayer book. Another caller was nine and leaving her house on Charles and Agricola streets. I was standing, just getting ready to leave to go down down the stairs to go to school. Oh, you were in the house? Yeah. I see. And then... Uh, uh, one of the windows blew out or smashed out. Yeah. And, uh, I got cut in the back of the head and on my arm. And uh, from there, from there, they got me to, uh, on the commons. This man was five and about to coast down a hill on Kempt Road. And uh, this uh, terrible explosion took place. And I, I didn't get a scratch. You're kidding. I didn't get a scratch. It must have blew all over me. So I went down. I thought it was the Germans. You know, I was yeah. only a kid. Yeah, yeah. And I, uh, uh, down where we lived, there were apple trees. And I remember my aunt walking through. Her arm was hanging off. And she had my brother by the hand. And, and after that, the host was all broken up. One caller says she felt it was her duty to tell what she saw on that pitiful day. It's, it's been quite, quite a tragedy, and as every year the memory comes up, we go relive it again, but still there's much to be thankful for. Rick Howe says there's much to learn from, too. Uh, I can't imagine what, what, the, what the citizens went through for a period of time there, but they were strong, and uh, they survived, and they rebuilt, and... Here we are. John Tatry, CBC News, Hunts Point.